Hi, welcome to a special edition of Education Matters, where we're looking at the reopening of our schools. And today we'll be really looking at our, uh, the athletic programs that we have in our uh, school districts. Uh, I'm really pleased to have with us two special guests. Uh, we have uh, the COO of NJSIAA, Colleen McGuire. And we also have Steve Schofi, who's the president of the executive committee for NJSIAA. He's also a school board member. So I think uh, that's important for our members to know uh, and for anyone in the school district. So first, welcome, Colleen. How are you? Great, thank you. Thank you for having me, Ray. Uh, great to have you. And Steve, how are you? I'm good, Ray. Uh, thanks for having us today. Yeah, uh, now Steve, you know, uh, sometimes when the administrators and school board members look at all the things that they have to do with the reopening, the sports, everything seems like a big challenge and it is. Um, but why do you think sports uh, is important uh, athletics is important in our schools? Well, that's a, a real simple question for me to answer, Ray. Um, our charge as educators is to provide a comprehensive education for all of our students. And uh, if, if you want to think of edu a comprehensive education to me means that there's three bases to it. That's academics, athletics, and the arts. Uh, without any one of those three components, I can't really say that we'd be offering a comprehensive education. Um, sports are especially important this year because of the pandemic and because of the quarantine that everybody has endured and is continuing to endure. Um, I think sports plays a really important role in establishing and maintaining the social and emotional health of the, of the, of the students. Um, also, you know, kids have been very sedentary throughout the course of this quarantine as have a lot of us. I mean, I've, I've never spent so much time in front of a computer going to Zoom meetings and as I've spent in the last uh, seven months. And, you know, same thing can be said for the, for the students. They've been, they've been in front of computers a large part of the time with their classes. So everybody's been very sedentary. So it's important to remain physically active and to get physically active. And so I think sports in this environment uh, serves, a lot of, serves a lot of needs. Okay, uh, Colleen, um, I know a lot of our members, uh, they're not sure of the governance. Who's making the decision at NJSIA? They probably think it's one person or a closed group. Uh, how are the school districts represented uh, in your structure? Well, in, you know, outside of, you know, the pandemic times that we went through, like the, the decision making for this summer, you know, we do have a, our governing body is our executive committee, which Steve this year is the president of. It's a, a comprised of 51 uh, members. Uh, and it has uh, stakeholders from all different components of uh, education. So not only do we have a designated county representative from all 21 counties, we have designated representatives from our non-public schools. We have ex officio representation from whether it be the Association of Superintendents, the Principal and Supervisors Association, but the School Boards Association. There's actually five designated positions on our executive committee for this uh, School Boards Association. Others that are out there, you know, we have uh, a member from the state legislature. Um, we have uh, a representative from Special Olympics. We have representatives from our coaches association, our officials association, et cetera. Um, so yeah, there's a governing body of 51 people that uh, are meet monthly. You know, Steve facilitates those meetings now. Uh, they meet nine times a year. Um, and they're the ones that are responsible for, you know, a, a, a lot of all, all of these uh, decisions over the summer given that the executive committee does not meet in the summer and the pandemic, you know, we did have an emergency powers resolution approved back in June that allowed Steve and our first vice president and second vice president to act on behalf of the executive committee. So we wanna give a big thanks to Steve and the other executive committee members because they were very involved all summer in weekly, multiple weekly meetings with task force, with uh, NJSI staff and attorneys. And ultimately they, they were involved with every decision and every plan that we laid out for the return to sports this school year. Um, so Steve, you didn't have the summer off and neither did <laughs> Colleen. It was a, like all of us, it was a different summer. Um, Steve, uh, I think the other thing is, what was the process? Who was involved in some of those decisions? I know you had the, uh, the there were medical uh, components to this. So, uh, and a lot of you are, you know, they, you have expertise, but maybe not in medicine. So how did you guys uh, pr proceed with this? That's a really good question, Ray. And uh, first of all, I have to, I have to give Colleen uh, her kudos and, and uh, I have to give my props to Colleen because she, she really 
uh, steered a lot of this and uh, got us going in the right direction. But what what she decided to do, and it was a it was a tremendous idea. Two task force were formed. One was you kind of alluded to the one already, the medical advisory task force. Uh, that was one of the two task force that was formed. That was comprised of a number of people, uh, but the main participants were three doctors uh, that are very, very well educated and very experienced in, in sports medicine and, uh, and, and infectious diseases. Uh, Dr. Damian Martins, who's the team or Jets team physician, uh, also works with high school students. Uh, so, you know, all three doctors have experience on the highest levels of athletics, but they all, they all deal with high school students as well. And they were primarily responsible for giving us all the medical advice that we relied upon <clears throat> to make decisions. Uh, and we met with them on a weekly basis throughout the summer. And a lot of work was done by that group. The uh, summer recess period consisted of schools being able to, to uh, host workouts. And those workouts were uh, conducted in three specific phases that were developed by the medical advisory task force, each phase being a little less res restrictive than the phase before it. And I would say about half the high schools in the state participated in those workouts. Um, and the results were very, very encouraging, very positive. We had really very, very few issues with COVID while we were following those protocols. Uh, the medical advisory task force then uh, developed all the protocols and all the guidelines for entering the actual season, the fall season, which we're in now. Um, and so far, so good. I mean, we've been, obviously we're, we're having some issues in some places and we, that's to be expected, but overall in the overall picture, things are going well. So that was one task force. The other task force was the sports advisory task force. And that was comprised uh, of a lot of, well, about six or seven athletic directors throughout the state that represent areas of the state in both public and private schools and um, have a lot of experience. And they're very, very great creative thinkers, outside the box thinkers. And it was the, the uh, charge of that task force to basically develop the structure of what the seasons are going to look like, to give the framework uh, to what the seasons are going to look like. And we started with the fall season. As I said, we're in that now. Um, you know, the seasons are, I guess, the key thing to understand about the, about the uh, athletic seasons this year. They're going to be kept local. The competition is being kept local and uh, they're abbreviated. They're not obviously as long as they usually are. The emphasis this year is to get the kids back participating. Uh, this is not the year to be worrying about championships or you know, playing maximum number of games. We wanna do this as safely and securely as possible and still give the kids a, a viable and worthwhile athletic experience. So it was really, it was those two task force and Colleen was uh, you know, a, a prime, she was the main uh, driver to the whole thing, um, but she had, I, I will say we had, she had some very willing passengers that were, were <laughs> on board to help out. And, and uh, but you know, it was, it was a very work intensive summer, but a very rewarding summer as well. Yeah, and Ray, I'll just follow on that. Thank you, Steve. I mean, I definitely, you know, I think everyone that was involved while it was a very busy summer, I think every one of us can look back and say, we enjoyed every conversation. We learned a lot and the whole process has been and will continue to be like just amazingly interesting. But other two other key uh, factors into all of this this summer was our conversations with the New Jersey Department of Health and with the governor's office. You know, they, they were engaged in providing us feedback. Um, and so, you know, their support and their, their recognition of not only the importance of high school athletics for, as Steve alluded to earlier, the emotional and social well-being of these kids as they return to a new school year, but their, uh, you know, their, their eagerness to, you know, get the sports, you know, the, there's a reason we, we're, we're playing outside sports, right? Because everyone knows outdoors, we're comfortable with, we need more time to assess how the indoor sports can be managed. So to, for the school's sake, let's start slow. We know we can be outside. We're just going to run our outside sports. We're going to pause on the indoors until we can work through some more understandings of what, you know, how to safely run the indoor sports. Um, just follow up. I want to follow up a little bit. So what does the fall schedule look like now? You, you kind of alluded to the indoor sports not occurring at this moment, but uh, what's the schedule look like for uh, most schools? So we started practices back on September 14th. 
Um, competition now will start Monday, the 28th for girls tennis. Um, football will start next Friday, October 2nd. So the other sports, which is cross country, field hockey and boys and girls soccer will start competition on Thursday, October 1st. They all have a six week, well, girls tennis, unfortunately, just because of the nature of it, they're gonna have a four week regular season and a one week postseason. They're gonna be able to play up to three matches per week. Um, and the reason girls tennis needs to get done a little earlier is because so many schools do not have lights. So we gotta have them done before daylight savings time. Um, the other sports have a six week regular season. Football obviously plays one game per week. The other sports can play two game, will play two games per week. Um, they're allowed to have a week, two weeks where they can pick up a third game if they need to help out, you know, another school to, to pick up a game. So they're gonna have a maximum of 14 games played. Uh, a lot of these sports would typically have maximums of like 23, 24 games played per season. Um, so, and then the, the postseason, we do want to give them a little bit of a carrot towards the end of the season, something to strive for and work for. So while the postseason will still be in place, it's going to be run very locally and it's going to be open to any school that wishes to participate. We wanted to take that that um, competition piece out of the season, meaning that, you know, relax, you know, don't worry about your schedules and earning PowerPoints and worrying about your seed for the postseason. Like anyone that wants to play, you're gonna get a spot in the postseason and we're gonna run it very regionally and very locally, so. Um, Steve, um, and then Tony, if you wanna comment, you also can. Um, I tell everyone everything that we're doing this year is etched in pencil. Uh, we're continually just have to adapt. What's your evaluation process as we move forward in, in this? Because you're outside now, but eventually when you get to the winter sports, that's a little bit more difficult. Right, yeah. It, well, we're taking it one step at a time, Ray. Um, you know, as Colleen alluded to, we're, we there, there are two fall sports that are indoor sports, gymnastics and volleyball, girls volleyball. And we're not running them right now at the present time. We've carved out a, a, a different part of the year. We actually have four athletic seasons uh, frameworked for us this year. And we've moved those sports to what we're calling season three, uh, which is in, in later in the school year. Um, so yeah, everything is outside right now and uh, seems to be going well. Again, like you said, everything's etched in pencil. Uh, if this is a fluid situation. I think that's a term we've heard probably a million times and we'll probably hear it a million more times. Um, but uh, in terms of, you know, monitoring the implementation, we're, we're hearing, you know, we, we hear back from athletic directors, we hear back from, from school districts, um, the county departments of health, uh, and, in, you know, the gov we, as Colleen said, we rely on information from the Department of Health, the State Department of Health, but also the county departments of health that the schools are located in, and also the governor's office. So as long as the metrics remain, um, you know, fairly stable, uh, we feel it's pretty safe to go forward. We'll be told if it's not safe to go forward. It, it, will, be, it will be a decision that would be made not only by the NJSIA, but there would be, there would be input or direction from the governor's office and, and the State Department of Health. Right now, monitoring the health metrics, uh, things seem to be going well. What individual school districts are telling us is that things are going well. There have been some hiccups here and there, but schools are, I've noticed schools that have to shut down for a, you know, a brief period of time are starting up their athletic programs again once, you know, once they're, uh, they deem it safe to do so. So uh, you know, things are going about, I would say about as, about as well as we expected or hoped for. Uh, and, you know, Colleen, uh, I guess we should also mention that uh, she took over as a CEO right when this pandemic started. So it wasn't like it's an easy tenure. You can't rely on past practices as much. So uh, I know that's a, a challenge. Um, so what, what would you tell the school administrators and school board members, as maybe even parents, as we move forward about how the, uh, you know, uh, NJSIA is viewing things or anything else that they need to know? Uh, in, in the current times that we're in. Yes. Um, yeah, just, you know, rest assured, like the NJSA's job, right, is to provide the parameters for sports to be played. And that, and we provide those parameters when the governor's office and the New Jersey Department of Health says, yes, sports can safely be played. We don't make the decisions to play the sports. That's up to the schools, 
that's up to the parents to allow their child to participate. You know, the schools will decide if they want to offer sports and play sports. All we can do is work with the Department of Health, get feedback from our schools and you know, athletic administrators, um, other medical professionals to say, okay, what are the what are the safe parameters that school that sports can be played within? We establish those parameters. You know, we have 435 member schools. There may be some schools that just don't feel at, the, at this time that their, their community is in a health position to safely play sports. That's fine. We fully respect the, those decisions. You know, um, there are schools that, you know, want to want to make sure that they have athletics to offer their uh, student athletes. So rest assured that, you know, we, we don't chime in on the decisions made at the local level. They need to make what decision works for their uh, school community. And no one in this office in Robbinsville, no one on our executive committee, you know, you know, passes judgment on those decisions. So as long as you know, we we are told, you know, in, in working with the governor's office and the New Jersey Department of Health that, okay, under these, you know, parameters, you know, sports can safely be played, and we just want to provide the framework for schools to offer the sports should they choose. So. Okay. That brings us to the end of this special edition of Education Matters. I'd like to thank Steve and Colleen. I think they really informed us about how high school athletics is really proceeding, or all athletics uh, is proceeding uh, in our schools. Um, and that I hope you found it informative.